Let's talk about Apache Spark. The word Apache means something in the open source software world, and that something is awful ideas on how to do things. The entire C10K problem was pretty much Apache's HTTP server saying, hmm, maybe we shouldn't spawn a new thread for every individual person who accesses the server. Although I'm 100% sure Apache's HTTP server will end up here someday, we're not talking about that now. Apache has hundreds of products dedicated to doing just about everything, from web servers, to office suites, to the very software that runs the Death Star. But today, we're focusing on Apache Spark, a data processing framework dedicated to taking advantage of clusters to, you know, process large amounts of data, like the kind you give to Facebook for free, you sheep. Since these kinds of clusters tend to be extremely powerful, you want to make sure access to them is kept under careful lock and key. So, of course, there's a vulnerability in Apache Spark that lets you bypass built-in authentication and run whatever code you want on the computer that it controls. Let's massively oversimplify it. Essentially, in order to do anything on an Apache Spark cluster, you need to send it a remote procedure call, or RPC, which contains the data you want and what to do with it, to the master computer. The master is just a big boss of the cluster that tells everyone else what to do. However, you want to make sure the RPC is coming from the right people, so you have something called a shared secret. This is a value that the Spark Master generates and gives to whoever's authorized to have it. When you want to send an RPC, you have to send the shared secret alongside it. Unfortunately, there's a way to bypass a shared secret altogether. If you frame the RPC not as do work for me, but download a jar file and do work on that, Spark will actually follow your instructions without authorization. If you control that jar file, Congratulations, the server will now execute anything in that jar file. You can now scan their network for more potential vulnerabilities or treasures, or install ransomware on their computer cluster, which would be crippling for companies that rely on big data. I haven't been able to find any reports of any attackers actually using this vulnerability to do anything. Exchange servers is a big train wreck that's still happening, and not as many people use Spark as they do Exchange. In addition, people usually put their Spark clusters behind a data manager that has security as a priority anyways, so it's not often that Spark is directly exposed to the internet. Regardless, not often is it never, and there are quite a few organizations with clusters that are currently vulnerable. The moral of the story, therefore, is to put your important stuff behind a proxy. There are very few services that should really be exposed directly to the open internet, and those that are should have some kind of moderated interface to prevent nefarious entities from doing whatever they want with it. There should be at least one layer, two layers if possible, of separation between the internet and any server that isn't your HTTP server. You should also consider whether or not your server should even be on the internet in the first place. This might seem obvious, but there are many legitimate goobers that just put whatever they have out, out into the open net. And that's why I'm scared of technology.